know, whether you're on a team or it's just a hobby, playing sports is a great way for kids to lead a strong and healthy life. But with certain sports, the chances of getting an injury like a concussion can be high. It is reported that one in five high school athletes will sustain a sports related concussion during the season. Now, when it comes to these kinds of injuries, knowledge is power. After a high impact injury, it's a matter of knowing the signs of a concussion, even if your child feels okay. Don't Marvel Life Sydney Whitfield headed to Nemours Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children to get the facts on concussions. It was just last year when high school student Paige Westgaff took a devastating blow during a volleyball game. Um, I'm a setter, so I was going for a ball that was originally mine and setter on Mac would get second ball and another teammate went to go get it and I tried calling her off and she wasn't listening. So I went to go get it and I tried to like stop myself, but I slipped on the floor and like I slipped and slammed back and like I slammed back like this. So then I smacked my head on the floor and apparently like stories that are told to me, I like, they could hear it from the bleacher, how hard I hit. After several tests, she realized she had a concussion. She then sought out Dr. Mark Reeder, a pediatric sports medicine specialist at Nemours Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children. It was his knowledge of concussions that helped Paige's mom get through the trauma she felt for her daughter. And from the time he came in, it, all the girls that worked in the, the orthopedic department where he's at, they've always made us feel like comfortable, family, you know, really cared about her, cared about her treatment. And it, it kind of put it at ease that I knew she was in good hands. From there is where her treatment began. And just like it happened to her, Dr. Reuter says anyone is capable of getting a concussion, no matter what the sport. We see um, kids of all sports get concussions. Um, you would think, you know, certainly the more common uh, sports that get concussions, and which is true, uh, football and soccer and basketball, which are contact and collision sports. However, um, I did see a, a swimmer recently who had a concussion who got accidentally kicked in the head. So you don't expect to get a concussion from swimming, uh, but we see that as well. Uh, we see cheerleaders uh, get concussions too. Um, cheerleading injuries, especially head and neck injuries, are pretty high, unfortunately. So we see a lot of concussions from that. So I'd say any, any athlete in any sport can get a concussion. That's because a concussion is not about the type of sport your child plays. It's about the amount of head trauma they experience. A concussion is basically any direct or indirect injury to the head um, that causes a dysfunction in, in brain function, basically. Um, so we use our brain for many tasks uh, throughout the day, reading, learning, especially in kids because they're in school typically. And what really manifests within a day or two after this direct or indirect head injury are symptoms. And those symptoms can include headache, feeling foggy, poor memory, uh, irritability, poor sleep, confusion. Uh, there are a host of symptoms that develop after such an injury. He says recent studies even show evidence that girls take longer to recover from concussions than boys. Uh, I think the study said that girls take about twice as long than boy counterparts um, to recover from their concussion. There are many theories behind that. Uh, girls are a little bit more forthright and expressive with their symptoms, so that may uh, have girls present a little bit sooner as well as longer with their symptoms. Um, what we do know after puberty is that girls have uh, higher rates of mood disorders as well as anxiety and stress and depression than boy counterparts after puberty. So again, these are, are, are comorbid conditions that can actually prolong symptoms of concussion. Knowing the facts, Dr. Reeder's patient Paige did what she could to recover. After continuous physical and memory therapy, she tried to gradually return to her school activities. But the transition wasn't quite gradual enough. With one of my classes, mainly like my English class, we had the assignment after assignment. And I was like stressed out because I was like, I couldn't get it done on time. And I'm not the type of person that likes to like slack off or just be like, oh, it's whatever. I want to maintain my straight A's and keep my grades up. And he was just like, you need to like, stop stressing because it's going to make their concussion worse and it's going to take longer for it. After a few weeks, they called Dr. Reuter because her headaches got worse. He then counseled Paige and told her that her stress was hindering the concussion recovery process and that her main focus should be to get better. And I think she took that, that advice pretty well because when I saw her after that, she said, you know, my headache went away. I didn't care as much. 
And I thought, again, with the new research, looking at girls and boys and concussion recovery, I thought that that example was high, or highlights really what we're seeing in the research. And it's certainly what I see in my practice too. I see girls recover a lot longer than boys for many reasons, a lot of stress and anxiety and some mood, mood disorders too as well that afflict uh, uh, girls more than boys. So the big lesson here, give it time. Chances are your child won't recover from this overnight, but you can avoid a lengthy recovery if you simply catch the early signs of a concussion. I think really it's important by uh, all uh, athletic trainers, healthcare providers, student athletes, coaches, referees, and even parents that even if there's a suspicion of a concussion, whether it be a direct or indirect head injury, and then subsequent symptoms of headache, not feeling right, um, confusion, uh, feeling in a fog, I think the recognition of, the, of possibly having a concussion should have a very low threshold to saying something, saying something to coach, your trainer, uh, your parent, your guardian, that, you know, hey, I, I just don't feel right. Um, that may be the only indicator that could be a concussion. Now, Linda Moore's team says if you have a young athlete, it's a good idea to have their brain function measured before an injury. They offer a full baseline concussion testing program, which you can learn more about on our website, delmarvalife.com. All this time. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and we didn't realize. No, no. And that's not that it makes you think of all the injuries you had when you were a kid. I know I had a few. And, and, you and just, makes you wonder. You just get up and shake it off yeah, and shake, move rub on. Yeah, some dirt on it and go. Not anymore. Yep.